What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of iGameCuz, the entirely cursed podcast that cannot seem to go week to week for the life of it. But we're back. Um, this is episode 11, I believe. And Wait, did we actually hit 11? I think we're on 11, my guy. I think it that's where it's at. It only took us like two years. Yeah. Um, it took us two years, but we finally made it. <laughs> we guys. finally did 11 episodes in the span of two years. It's insane. Anyway, uh, as always, we are cousins, and we are here to talk about the things we love, which are video games and um, why we do it. Hence the name, I Game Cuz, double entendre, we're cousins, and we. this is why we game. So, that's yeah. that's an intro. Anyway, uh, I am your host, Tim Russell, a.k.a. TC Russell, a.k.a. Dat Boy Sly from my gaming community, and I am joined, as always, by... My cousin Kai, aka Risen Chaos, aka Risen, aka the Warhammer Goat. How is it going, my guy? I I'm, I wasn't <laughs> expecting that last bit, but uh, you know what? Hey, it's it's going good. Life be kind of vibing, and also I'm just I a mm, little tired, but you know what? That's fine. I'm okay with this. Uh, good stuff, man. So, a little bit last week, we missed because Kai decided to have a scheduling conflict. Um, Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. (laughs) I've been planning this, like, um, two months in advance. Nah, it's uh, it's all good. He uh, did an entire week of streaming back to back to back to back to back uh, on his uh, Twitch channel, Risen Chaos. So, go over there. You might be able to watch the archives. But uh, it was a good time. I jumped in a couple days. I... uh, Jumped into his Minecraft server. I had big plans to burn the place to the ground, but that did not pan out because I got sick of walking through the desert. And then yeah, he couldn't he couldn't get to us. <laughs> we had, like to be we had been walking for like twenty minutes to finally get to an area that wasn't desert. Yeah, <laughs> it was not a good experience. But hey, now we now we're just kind of vibing. Now we've like killed the Ender Dragon, all that crap. Nice we're vibing. Let's go. Um, and yeah, so he did that all last week and it, it just happened to take the slot of our regular scheduled podcast. So we did miss last week, but we are back. We all have full force. We are in full force and we have quite the episode for you today. Probably. I don't know. I'm going to be honest. We had big plans. All right. We're, we're going to rewrite the Halo TV show today. And I gotta be honest, Kai, my life's been a little hectic over here. So yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be. Time to, uh, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of this today. Hip. I'm gonna be from the hip. pew pewing from the hip. But I think yeah. it's gonna be more entertaining that way, quite frankly. Um, what What about you? Did you bring anything planned for us, or are you also pew pewing from the hip? A little bit of both, because you have to understand. Uh, I have asked myself this question since the Halo TV show came out. Okay. So it's less that I specifically prepared anything, but more like. Since I watched the show and hated it so much, I have tried to, like, come up with better ideas. Gotcha. And it, I'll be going over some of the ones I've thought up of. I'm going to be honest, man. I think that no matter what we come up with here today, it is going to probably be a thousand times better than whatever was going on in that show, quite Listen, frankly. They <laughs> took the bar and dug six feet down and put the bar in the ground. You literally have to try to be worse than we this show. quite frankly cannot possibly mess this up at all. Unless you just say the entire Halo TV show, but he takes off his helmet sooner. Right. right. He ne- no, he just never wears the helmet. Boom, right. automatically worse. I was gonna come in hot with a joke and be like and make that my pitch. It was like <laughs> uh so we're gonna start on a planet. Um that has we've never seen before and we're going to start with a master chief doing some flips <laughs> and then we're going to have him take off his suit for the entirety of the show completely to the point where he's naked at one point my word and then Back that was going to be my pitch which obviously that happened Yo, in can the real we, show can we name can we name one city called reach city <laughs> <laughs> reach city <laughs> Did you see that? That's an actual title in the show. Is that actually what it is? Like, they just it's named it Reach City? 
I'm not sure not planet literally... reach or anything just reach city no let me double check it was reach city i'm pretty sure oh my gosh halo tv show yeah no we're you know reach <laughs> city located on planet reach there's there's absolutely no way we'd name a city a unique name on the planet reach no we're gonna call it reach city reach talk city. about the laziest writing oh my gosh all right well enough ragging on the tv show um, we do that all the time. I think anyway. the TV, quite frankly, I think the TV show just kind of ragged on itself. I, yeah. I don't know if you can really do much to, <laughs> to rag on. But uh, enough ragging on it. Let's jump into this. Kai, I want you to take it away with your oh. your pitch. Your What is your pitch for the Halo TV show? All right. So do you want... Do you want one with more of a like overarching like I have a handful of ideas. Do you want one that's more of an overarching story? Do you want one that's a bit more episodic, kind of like a classic cartoon with a bit of story? What are we so talking about? So you structure it however you want. It's because... got to I guess we'll go by the rule of thumb that it's probably gonna have to you can generalize the ideas for time's sake, but right. just like kind of give a a show bible pitch so you know what a show bible is uh not okay so a show bible essentially when they start writing a tv show they bring in from my understanding i am not a professional screenwriter by any means but from my understanding what they do when they start writing a show is they bring in somebody to write the show bible which is essentially your overarching story from front to back what what the story is and everything it needs to contain so just give your show bible pitch of the overarching story and i guess the rule of thumb would be that it probably you'd have to be able to riff off enough content for what 10 episodes is that how long it was something like that so maybe 12 so yeah like so it's got to be enough for a full season of tv what we would typically deem as a full season which now i would say safe is 8 to 10 to maybe 12 episodes um so yeah, just kind of go from there where you will. Just just pitch me a show bible. Tell me All tell right. me what you you would you would do with the Halo show. So, uh, my first one of the first ideas I actually had about a Halo TV show uh, would be about headhunters. Did I? I think I wanted to bring this up, but I think you cut me off from telling you what they are last time. I probably did. I was in a weird because you space. wanted to save it for this. Yeah. 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 I told you. Yeah. Let's save it for this. Okay. Yeah. Go okay. ahead. Okay. So. Now I'm going to just tell you a little bit about Headhunters, okay? Just okay. that way, I think you'll, as soon as I tell you, you'll kind of get the idea. All right. Headhunters are squads of two that are essentially sent on suicide assassination missions. Oh. Okay. Uh, they're usually like the Spartan 3s, I believe. So think like Halo Reach Spartans. Right. Usually less armored, but they still have, you know, the basic stuff. But their whole thing is they're the people that you send down in like drop pods or like just dropping from orbit to go and snipe leaders uh, of the covenant and whether they come back or not doesn't matter it's just a matter of they did the job okay so i think there's a lot of potential for an actual like tv show in that whether it be a like very story driven one or even like uh assassination of the week like a classic like power rangers thing but you know more serious because it's halo Right. I think that in either one of those two fashions, a headhunter TV show could be absolutely awesome. Because either it could be something as simple as the entire series is following two headhunters as they go through a planet trying to do their mission. And then honestly, I'd say kill them off at the end because that's kind of the whole point of headhunters is that they are these suicide missions. They complete the job, but after like a little bit of like a final stand or even like even like send them the out the way of cat from halo reach like one of them okay there's some there's some like possibilities here that i think you'd be able to build up a really nice dynamic between the two spartans and maybe like their like person in the chair okay like and still have it feel non-repetitive and like the story's always moving forward gotcha okay maybe it's like uh just for like a little example Maybe, like, mission to mission, there's, like, okay, uh, your target is this person. However, to get to this person, you need to cause a distraction, so kill this, these two targets. 
and so on. Like, you, you get the idea. There's a lot of possibilities and finesse that could go into it from both a personality side, a tactical side, and also keeping it true to Halo. Okay. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Uh, that's Those are the ideas I like. Stuff set in the universe, but not necessarily about Master Chief. Because we saw what happened when they messed with Master Chief, and they screwed it up. So, yeah. And I when I heard that the Halo TV show was about Master Chief, I'm like, okay, I'm not saying they can't do it, but there's a couple things that can go wrong. Not only with the character of Master Chief, but my biggest fear when I heard that it was going to be Master Chief was that it was the first thing they were going to do was try to turn him into a human being and oh guess yep. what that's what they did they tried and what was failed. it episode two like episode and, two he yeah, yeah and i don't i don't necessarily have a problem with that it's just it was so poorly done that it it was like you tuned out immediately you're like this isn't yeah. master chief and then not only that but also they messed up i feel like you can mess up the physicality of master chief really easily because he's supposed to be like this seven foot tall spartan that like weighs Mm -hmm. a bajillion pounds or whatever so it's like you kind of mess that up as soon as in episode one as soon as chief was doing like backflips over over the elites and stuff i was like what is what what's happening here like even i knew that wasn't right i was like fun fact actually (laughs) that's that's actually one of the accurate things they got right him doing backflips yeah like when did uh, halo when did master chief ever do a backflip in halo halo legends in which was a movie that like a movie of like mini shorts that came out in 2011 2012 2013 around that era you know master uh spartans actually are meant to be extremely agile in armor okay their whole their so what what do you know about Spartans? I don't want to go full Halo so, nerd on you, but what do you know? All I know about Spartans is this is going to be very vague. There's definitely going to be some um, stuff missing. Okay, let me give you my background for Halo okay. real quick, just so that the general audience does not get absolutely pissed at me for just <laughs> butchering. Yeah, I get, so, I get, it, I get it. So my background for Halo, okay, I was never a Halo fanboy. I never, I didn't grow up with the games. I wasn't like super into it i knew people who were really into it but i was never into it myself i didn't play halo for the first time until i got my first xbox 360 and i bought halo 3 was one of the first games i played for it that disc got ruined because my dad tripped over the ethernet cable in the hallway and tipped over my xbox and so it did the ring thing in the middle yeah and so i played maybe two or three hours of halo multiplayer before my halo disc got ruined and i was like well i tried i tried halo and i'm never buying this game again (laughs) and then um about i want to say about 10 maybe 10 years is a little too much but at least six or seven years after that i married jazz and we moved into our house and we were trying to bond a little bit more and uh, so we played. We downloaded the Master Chief Collection on Xbox One, and we we played it together, co-op, all of them. Um, right. And then we played Halo Five together as well. So, um, yeah, I so I I have played every single Halo. I haven't finished Infinite, but other than that, like my Halo backlog is just I've I finished all of them and. I don't, I couldn't tell you the first thing about what happened in any of the stories. I could tell you most of what happened in Reach, but even that has like some blank spots. So, so that all being said, my knowledge of Spartans is pretty sparse. To me, I've always gotten the impression of Spartans that, and tell me, totally tell me if I'm off base and educate me because I really do want to know more about the lore. Right. But my impression of Spartans is that they they were either born in a lab or they were taken as young children or something like Wait, that. Do you, want, do you want me to give you a rundown on, like, the basic, like, how a Spartan is made? Okay, like, let just me... just the basic. 
Let me Once be. You're done. Let me be a buffoon, and then yeah, educate me. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> so. My basic knowledge of Spartans is that the impression I got from the games and everything is that they were either, like I said, either taken as young children or they were born in a lab or some sort of thing. I don't know. And then they were trained up to be these essentially super soldiers. And they all got these cool suits of armor. And in terms of functionality, um, they always gave me the impression that they were really heavy and not really super agile. So I don't know... That's why I thought that it was weird and off base that Master Chief right. was doing backflips in the TV show. So it's like, at least in the game, from the game standpoint, it always played really stiff and slow to me. So I was like, okay, these guys obviously aren't very agile. They can just take a lot of, a lot of heat. Punishment. Yeah. So that's my basic, my very basic and totally off base knowledge of Spartans. Um, like I said, I didn't absorb much from the games. We played through co-op, so during cutscenes, I was, like, making fun of the game and stuff. To so, be fair, most... The thing is, a lot of, like, Halo games, they don't really touch how Spartans are made. I think they did a little bit in Halo 4. I know Halo 4 and 5, it was pretty heavy-handed, with Master Chief's origin, at least. I don't yeah. know... I don't, but it was still like very vague flashbacks from what I remember. There wasn't much yeah. heavily explained. It was very like a flash of him as a kid or whatever. Like, you know, you didn't really. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, you didn't really get right too well. much um, in so, game. But So, how a Spartan is made, right? Okay. Uh, at the age of six years old, they are kidnapped, and re their parents essentially they are kidnapped and replaced with what is called a flash clone. Think, Ooh, this got think a clone of them, but designed to die within a couple days. Oh, okay. So it can be so like just for some like organ failure. It could be a disease, whatever. They are designed to die in a couple days while the actual kids have been kidnapped and are now being trained from the age of six onward to about the age of 14. During this training phase from, you know, six to 14, probably about a quarter to half of those kids are going to die in training. Okay. Because they're, they're, like, getting the full thing. Like, you know, they're getting, sh like, thrown out of uh, pelicans and told, hey, pull the shooter, you're going to die. You know, it's that kind of training. And then they die. Right? And then a lot of them die. <laughs> uh, age of 14, they go through augmentation surgery. Okay. So they're, like, it's, like, metal grafted onto their bones. Organs improved. Uh, that's how they get, like, the chip links in the back of their brain stems, you know? Okay. Like, they're supposed to, the surgery is supposed to make them smarter, stronger, faster, everything. So gotcha. they are, by technicality, superhuman. Okay. Uh, go throw in a bit more training so that way they can get used to their bodies. They are then given um, Mjolnir armor, which is, you know, the standard Halo armor. Thor's armor, yep. Yep, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and the way Mjolnir armor is designed, it's... Be, essentially, it is designed to perfectly fit and adapt to Spartans and their augmentations. Okay. A normal, if, if a normal person wears Mjolnir armor, Mjolnir armor is so responsive that them doing a simple like wrist movement, it's so responsive that it could break their wrist, and in the words of the lore, their own pain-induced spasms will kill them in the armor if they are not augmented. That's crazy. Yeah, so essentially, yeah, it's so essentially the augmentations are needed to go into the Spartan armor. And these augmentations allow kind of like that perfect like symbi symbiosis with the armor, right? right? Which is how they're able to run at in lower like 60 miles per hour doing front flips and back flips and all that stuff. They don't show that in the game. That sucks because which that is sounds awesome. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. My biggest complaint about Halo is that it's slow and stiff. And it's so like, you know the truth? why am I not yeah. running at 60 miles an hour in the game? Like, you why know not? the truth? Like, you know how in Halo 5 they added all the jump packs and stuff? Mm -hmm. They didn't need that. They just need to say, yeah, we're going to allow you to actually play as a Spartan now. Yeah, a real, a real like, lore Spartan, like a Spartan from yeah. lore, and you'll be fine. Like, why, like, why did they add all these power-ups and stuff when it's like... 
I get why like, from a game design standpoint, like yeah. it for an arena shooter, you have to have those things that balance the game out. So I understand game design standpoint wise, but I'm like, if I am this super soldier that can now that I know run at 60 miles an hour and do backflips and stuff, why am I not doing that in the game? It's a good question. <laughs> and there's actually like, there's actually quite a few memes about how in a video game, you know, a ghost like drives at master chief. He gets flattened, right? Right. In lore, he stops the ghost with its, with his bare hands, picks it up and throws it into space. That's highly disappointing. So this is my thing is everything you just said about, you know, kids getting kidnapped and stuff. That makes me fall in love with the Halo lore. But my yeah, disappointment dude, is the fact that none of that is portrayed in, in the game. game at all. Okay. So okay. I, I officially yeah. love Halo lore more than I love the actual games that the lore is based okay. on. If I were <laughs> to send you... So there's actually like two or three free full-to-watch movies on YouTube made by Halo. Okay. That go into this. After the podcast, do you want me to send them to you? Yeah, send them to me. I need to know more about I think, kids getting kidnapped I, and I, I, replaced I, I with think you're gonna that like died. them, dude. That I think is you're gonna like them that is peak level sci-fi to me. Like you're you're kidnapping kids and replacing them with clones to make their parents think that they died naturally. Yeah, and it makes, like that it makes, is like, dope. That is a dope and premise. Like, and it makes like it really like dope uh, dopes in. No, it really like brings in that whole thing of. It makes you realize just how bad it was for humanity that they had to go for that. Yeah. It makes you realize, oh, right, humanity was in such a bad place that they had to resort to this. Yeah. And it's like, it makes you realize that also, like, in Halo 1, Master Chief is, like, 18 or 20. That's Halo pretty 1, crazy. Master Chief, yeah. You, like, again, nobody, you don't really learn this stuff unless you go into the lore, and I, that's really disappointing. That's what I'm saying, is, like, Halo, every game just kind of throws you into a battle and says, this is happening now, and you never know why you're there, what you're doing, really, like, that's what I'm saying, that's why I just kind of, we played through the game's co-op, and yeah. I just kind of tuned out the story, because I'm like, I have no idea what's going on, I have no motivation to go read this stuff, I know it's all in comic books and shorts and whatever, but I just have no desire to go explore this lore outside of the game. I and want it to be is, told to me in game. I think what I've realized, at least for me as well, is similar to Dark Souls, I enjoyed Halo more once I learned the story of it outside right. of the game. Because yeah. learning the story outside of the game gives a new appre appreciation for what you're doing in the game. It just sucks that... You're not doing backflips in Halo. It just sucks that you're not doing backflips in Halo and running at 60 miles an hour. Because it's... Those are my big... Movement is my biggest complaint of the Halo games. I'm like, why am I not? That's why I loved Infinite so much. Yeah. Because you get a grappling hook and it just... It makes the movement so much better. Also... Oh, I'm going to make you mad. Also, I thought Halo Infinite just played immaculately compared to the other yeah. ones. But... I'm going to make you mad. Ready for this? What? How would you like to know that Halo had an official film that at least had Master Chief in it, who is more accurate to the actual character of Master Chief than they did in the entire Halo TV show? Are you talking about that Forward Unto Dawn or whatever? Yeah. Uh, I yeah. watched. I started watching a clip of it. Like uh, I started watching some of it because it was like it, is it was free one of my on something. I can't remember what it Bun was. Wasn't it free on Bungie, like, as a website back when Bungie was running it? Maybe. I don't know. And I was trying to get into Halo, and I was like, this movie looks kind of dope. So I, like, I started watching it, and I was like, it didn't jive with me at all. It was like... So I don't remember what it was about it, but it was like... I, I, I bet I can tell you what it was. It felt weird. I was like, this doesn't feel like a... I bet I can tell you what it was. What? The movie, up until, like, the final act, isn't actually about, like, the war or the fighting. You are watching Marines getting trained, and I essentially, think, yeah, it's because it's the training and it's all the, tr like, drama and interpersonal relationships that when you yeah. think of Halo, you don't go to that. But that's the thing. The nice thing about the films and the lore is that it actually gives reason to have that. Yeah, I think that's what I didn't like about it was it felt kind of like watching The Office, but it wasn't funny. Because there were like, 
there were like interviews with like the Marines and stuff as they were like training or whatever. I feel like, or am I misremembering this? I think you're misremembering that part. But, but it felt. Me out. I remember it felt like a documentary, and I was like, I don't. Yeah. I don't really like this. I don't like this so, at all. Here's <laughs> what I recommend. Without watch, try watching it again, but okay. without expecting action. I was also, I think that's what I was expecting. I think I was expecting to watch it and I was expecting to see like basically a war film set in the Halo universe because that's what it seemed like it was to me. And then it just wasn't that and I was really disappointed. And the news I have for you is if you look, go into it without knowing that, I or without looking at it like that, I think it's a lot better. Also, it... That movie single-handedly made me realize how scary elites are. Yeah. The game does not do elites justice because you are playing as a Spartan. Yeah. You mow them down like they're nothing. But when you're a normal human with a gun, they're horrifying, dude. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I think it's so funny because tonally, Halo Media is so inconsistent between the games and the... The stuff I've seen from comics and the stuff that I've seen from yeah. like, from from stuff like Forward Unto Dawn and stuff, because it's like, I'm like, what are we going for here? Because the game portrays the Covenant as like these silly little creatures, like screaming nonsense and running away from Master Chief, and I'm like, these guys are a threat to the universe. Are you t- are you kidding me? Like, what <laughs> what's going on? And then like the yeah, I don't know. It just, it always felt like... Anytime you know, I play a Halo game, it feels kind of silly. I just don't... You know the Brutes in Halo 3 and, like, 2 and, like... You know the Brutes? Yeah, Craig. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're the they're the people... They're the ones that actually eat humans. Nice. And, like, will rip them limb from limb. I love a good human feast. And yet, you never really get that sense of fear from the Brutes in game. Yeah. You don't realize how scary hunters are until you realize that you know they're an actual threat in lore yeah yeah it's Dude, weird i'm telling you there's so much halo lore and potential that i think that's the biggest reason why i was so mad about the halo tv show aside from screwing up master chief somehow because it had that... the potential to expand the halo universe in a legit way yeah. and it just did it just flooded the yeah. entire opportunity Exactly. And they're getting a season I'm, two, so look forward to that. What are, what, it's filming right now. At the end of, like, by the way, spoilers if for some reason you guys want to watch the show. In season one, at the end, Cortana takes over Master Chief's body. Nice. So, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to figure some stuff out. Like, again, I, I don't like any of the dynamics in the current halo tv show i think that they screwed up the relationship between cortana and master chief completely they biffed it wildly uh for some reason master chief is an absolute idiot yeah in the show that's the thing is like in the game you never get the sense he's dumb you just get the sense that he's very he knows when to speak and yeah. when he speaks, it's totally badass. And like exactly. And <laughs> but for some reason in the show, they just portray him as kind of an idiot, and he needs guidance for everything. So which again, it yeah. sucks because even like the one-liners. If you like, uh, your Halo Two, I think, uh, first mission. You know, the Covenant put a bomb on the UNSC ship, right? Right. And somebody's like, Master Chief, what are you doing? He's like, giving the Covenants back their bomb. Dude, but here's so the thing. good. It's so good. But then you also think about it. He realized, okay, here's what I have to do to actually do this and survive. Right. Like, he thought this through. He didn't just do it on a whim. He thought it through and performed what he needed to do. And pulls it off flawlessly, might I add. Yeah. That's the kind <laughs> of thought that he puts into this stuff. But that's not the kind of thought you see Master Chief do in the TV show. Dude, like, one of my favorite scenes is... It's actually a very similar scene is uh, from Halo Infinite at the beginning of the game when he's um, just kind of free-floating, seemingly free-floating through space. Um, 
and he's like going to get a gun or whatever and he's um he's just kind of like kind of moving flawlessly through all the debris and everything yeah. and then you see him like gently put down one of his fellow soldiers like kind of move gently move him out of the way and then he just keeps going and it's like he's thinking while he's doing this you know it's like yeah he's not just mindlessly like just blowing crap up he's not vin, Di- vin dieseling this situation you know he's just like he's like no okay i'm i'm constantly thinking about my next move i'm not just like barreling through stuff and hoping for the best so yeah and we didn't get that in the tv show and we didn't get that in the tv show at all so all right but halo tv show halo would have like punched his own guy out of the way his own dead soldier out of the way you know yeah he would have like (laughs) grabbed him by the chest rig just (laughs) (laughs) okay um is there any is there anything else for your pitch or is it just the headhunters idea headhunters other than that it's just like uh what was it i think i like the idea of halo reach being turned into a tv show i thought that could have done really well yeah uh i also credit to in kind of like looking into this a little bit credit to a youtuber called the act man who actually did a video on rewriting the halo tv show oh he did and he, okay and he did it in a way that was essentially episodic formats of the first halo game okay but fleshing it out more because you i you i remember you said the first halo game really felt like more of just an action action shooter with a less focus on story yeah uh, yeah that first halo game has no virtually if you're really not paying attention um i don't even think you have to not be paying attention even if you're paying attention there's really virtually no lore or story in that game like i gotta oh. be honest i don't even know what the goal of that first game was i just remember getting dropped onto different planets saying this is your playground for a while enjoy so fun fact, then, that's all one planet that's all it's on all halo one ring. planet that's all Holy that's all cow. just on the halo ring all of the, the they did a really great job at diversifying like the different environments then yeah because it was like i had no see that's that's how little the story impacted my playthrough of that game because i really had no idea where i was like, or what i was doing the I, entire time i i can tell you the the main point of halo one was essentially hey the covenant are trying to explode the halo ring don't let them or and then let them but you know get then, everybody away safely and then they never really explain the importance of the halo rings or what they really do not not in a way that was impactful like do it was you all know the lore now no i don't i still don't do you, i do played you want... Do you I've want played. To know the lore? I have played Tim. five and a half of these games, Tim, and I still don't do know what the Halo the Rings are. Yes, Tim, do you want tell to me know what the, the tell me the lore okay. of the Halo Rings. If you're gonna freak out once you hear this, because I think you're gonna th- you're gonna realize how much more interesting it is. You know, you as you with everything that I've learned about Halo. Do you remember yeah. the Forerunners? Like in like you have you are you familiar with the Forerunners? Are those the guy with the, the guys with the cool weapons in five? Yeah, and like in four with like the orange shield. Yeah, and all yeah, that. I love I love those. Or weapons. At least they're part of it, I believe. Okay. Um, so they're an ancient race civilization that, essentially, uh, one of the things they did actually was they took a bit of like DNA from every living thing in the universe, humans, covenant, everybody, to okay. preserve it in a vault. That was one of the things they did. Gotcha. And however. What their mortal enemy, the Flood, was constantly screwing them over and, like, wiping them out. So, they legitimately invented all of these Halo rings as a final solution for the Flood, pretty much. You know what? Now that you say that, that just, like, it's something in my brain. I think I knew that in some on some level. But, yeah, it just shot to the back of my brain and down my butt crack, so... Yeah, it, it, <laughs> but knowing that it's cooler when you know that, where it's like, yeah, you know, these entire rings have the ability to just dis- like destroy a universe, or right. maybe not universe, but like a like a star system or whatever. Right. And the, they're like these huge weapons of mass destruction that were used originally to hold back the flood. Okay. And clearly, you also realize, oh. It must have not fully worked, or they never were able to set any of them off because we're still fighting the flood. Right? Yeah, dude, the flood are so cool. I gotta yeah. be honest. Like, and f- as far as like video game, 
enemy types go. Like, the Flood are really cool. I don't think they're as cool as the Locust from Gears. But that's Fair just enough. my Gears bias coming through. Probably. Um, but yeah, so I guess in terms of my pitch for the show, again, very limited knowledge of Halo, even though I played five and a half games. And um, I guess six and a half if you count Reach. Yeah, you do. You and do. and a, a little bit of ODST. Um, I gotta still play through ODST. I, I guess... I don't know, man. It's like you said, Reach would just be a dope show if you just directly translated that, pretty much. Yeah. Like, really, if you just took that game and went and just broke it up into 10 episodes and found good breaking points, you'd have a great show right there, just translating that one-to-one, quite honestly. It's so good. It's so well-written. It's full of impactful moments. It... Mm -hmm has a great cast of characters that each have a unique personality and yeah i think reach would just be a great show not an easy cop-out answer i think that if you had to do chief i think that they weren't totally off base fleshing out his character i like i said i just think they did it totally wrong even as a halo, exactly. even as a halo outlier i just i think I knew from the moment that he took off his helmet, I was like, this isn't Chief. Chief would never do that. (laughs) He didn't take off his helmet until the end of five, and we didn't even get to see it. Like, it was like... I think, like, he takes off his helmet in four, but, like, you can only see, like, his eyes. Right, yeah. And that's only, by the way, if you beat the entire game on Legendary. (laughs) Right, and wasn't it because, like... Wasn't it basically lore wise? Wasn't it because the mission was essentially complete? Like his mission was done. So like to some degree, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's just it's totally off base. The character's totally off base. It just so I don't think they were totally wrong for, for wanting to flesh out that character and give him more backstory and explore his childhood a little bit more. But it was just totally wrong. And I think so. I think you do that. Somebody smarter than me who knows more about Halo than me should do that. Not not me. But <laughs> but like I said, even in even the um imbecile that I am when it comes to Halo, I still knew that that was wrong. And I was like, okay. So, do that right. Just take flesh out Chief's character, do it the right way. Um basically just don't let him take his pants off either. I mean, Honestly, don't don't take him out of the armor. Don't, don't take him out of the armor. To don't be don't name a city Reach. I mean, don't just name Reach City. <laughs> don't name a don't name a city on Halo on Reach. That's Reach City. But that's the disappointing part. Is really there were elements of the Halo TV show that I thought they were starting off on the right track, and then they just totally flubbed it by episode two. I think, I think that visually, visually, yeah. I think the TV show was really well done. I think that if they. I think what they should have done is start out with, you know, introduce Chief. Because what I thought they were going to do, what I thought they were going to do and what I think they should, they could do if they they gave another go at this, which they won't. They're going to roll with this for a while. But if they gave another go at this, I think what they could have done on the path that they set out on at first was start out with Chief introducing him. And then do a series with him fleshing out his character and then show him going into the cryo chamber before the events of halo Mm one and then have the reach events play out and have the fall of reach happen and then show him coming out of the cryo chamber for season three or whatever and then like you you know know do you know how well that ties in? Because yeah. I'm not even sure if you knew this. There's an Easter egg in Halo Reach that you can see Master Chief. I don't know if you knew that, though. I didn't know that. Okay, very end. Uh, like, you know the mission where uh, you as the player Noble Six hands off the Cortana AI to the captain? Yeah. There is a cutscene during that sequence where if you look, like, you, it gives you the option to, like, look to the right, and you can see Master Chief in the cryopod. That's dope. 
you know that's where you end the second season of what you're proposing yeah you end it as the camera pans over to see master chief in that cryopod yeah and then the next season there can be a scene talking about noble six and the sacrifice that he did see and that's that's the thing is like they started out strong with the idea of starting with chief before the events of reach and then like maybe i thought the way they were going to take it with this like girl like this female sidekick that he had um the the one chick that you, he saves yeah. in the beginning of the show i thought he was going to commit war crimes to save her essentially and then that was going to result you mean pull a last of us yeah or something? i thought he was basically gonna i thought it was going to be the plot of the last of us where he he basically saves this girl, but in doing so, he commits war crimes to save this girl because it's the right thing to do, which is totally Chief's M.O. Just going you know, against... Commit... Yeah. That's... He would... Here's the thing. He's broken orders so many times in the yeah, past. Yeah, that's what I'm like, saying. The entire... Isn't the entire plot of Halo 4 pretty much him saying, him, screw Yeah, him breaking... I know what I need to do. Well, in Halo 5, the reason you play as Locke for most of that game... Criminal. Yeah, the reason you play as Locke for most of that game is because Cheeks... Che- Cheeks... Chief is rogue and you don't know why. So like Locke is hunting him down in that game. So it's like that's why I'm saying it's totally in Chief's character game lore wise I assume lore wise outside of the games for him to break orders in order to do the overall right thing. So what I'm saying is like I thought where they were going with it was he was going to break orders and commit war crimes to save this girl because it was the right thing to do. And then that was going to result him in getting cryo frozen. And then while he was in cryo sleep, the fall of reach was going to happen. And it resulted in them unfreezing him because he's their best soldier and he's their last hope. That's where I thought they were going with it. And I would have much rather seen that show. And I feel like just knowing what the general audience of halo feels maybe i'm off base but i feel like they would have much rather seen that show as well which maybe not also though because i know a lot of the halo fan base hates halo 4 and 5 but that's some of the best crap to me when I think, when i'm watching I think halo when i'm watching master chief get hunted down by another spartan because he's rogue trying to figure out what's going on with cortana like I think that's good stuff, but I know I a lot of the fan base disagrees. Said. I think there's something to be said about what you're saying, but I'm not quite sure. So here's how it goes, in my opinion. I think you're onto something, but one of the things that they establish in some Halo lore is Master Chief actually has a lot of value on human life. He puts a lot of value on human life as a whole. Right. Player. Yeah. And that. So here's the thing. What I think it would more so be than anything is i feel like it'd be closer to the kid dies and that becomes his motivation at least for like a little bit okay Uh, i could see that here's the thing i'm just saying you just need that motivation for him to essentially go against the what is it the unsc or whatever Here's the thing. You don't actually need him to go against the UNSC yet. You can save that. Okay. Because ultimately in Halo 1 and Reach and all of those, Master Chief is still very loyal to the UNSC. That stuff doesn't right. happen up until Halo 4 when they're threatening to take away a- Cortana, who is pretty much his best friend. Okay. And borderline, like, love interest in a weird way. I think, honestly, if I were to... I don't understand the purpose of introducing the girl in the halo tv show that's i yeah I, here's the thing she, they get the master chief and her don't see each other after like episode three or something well that's what i'm saying is she seemed i didn't watch past episode two because i couldn't right. take it anymore she but seemed shoehorned into you too right like, she that seems wasn't just from the early offset she seems shoehorned in which is why i felt like adding that plot as the main plot where chief is trying to save her because of his um because of his love of human life and thinking that it's got value inherently i think that adding that plot in of him trying to save her because the unsc is after her um and just doing it because it's the right thing to do i think that would give 
a reason for Master Chief to have been in cryo sleep during the Reach events. And then also, um, it would just make her character ten times more valuable. It would give her purpose rather than, you know, the shoehorned in character that she was inevitably. Right. So, I don't know, like... I feel like that's totally in Chief's character, from what I know of Chief's character. It's in line with the stuff that I love personally from Halo, which is 4 and 5, which a lot of people obviously disagree with me. But it's very much in line with that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, I just think it would just be an overall better TV show in general (laughs) than what we got. But I also think, I think a big missing piece for me is, and I don't know if this was ever answered in any lore, so... Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Almighty Halo Master One. Uh-huh, um, uh-huh. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but is there anything that says why Master Chief was in cryo sleep for the events of Reach? Because why would their best soldier be on ice while the worst one of the worst events is going down? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, why would you not wake Chief up when this is happening? Like, you think he could have saved some Spartans or something, you know? So, you know, the are you familiar with the whole thing of... How do I... The thing about what you're saying is they had to... Essentially, they had to take a calculated risk. Okay. It was... He is the best soldier we have. But is it worth, like, using him and possibly losing him on an already... Up on a planet that we know we're going to lose? Okay, I see. They, I, I, by the, I think, third or fourth mission, it sets in... Wait, was it? After George died, right? You blow up the one cruiser, but then you see, right. a, like, ten more jump into orbit. You realize, we can't win this. Right. So it's here's the thing. I part, I kind of part of me kind of believes that they originally planned on putting re like hey, chief on to reach, right? But the, like again, he was he was on reach during the events technically, because he was on the ship in cryo sleep. I feel like I know he was to... on reach, but I mean like this is my thing is I feel like him being in cryo sleep is kind of a cop out. I would have bought it much more if he was on missions somewhere else like on a different on a different halo ring or on a different planet or whatever because it's like why is your best soldier in cryo sleep at all when the stakes are this high period like i think it doesn't make sense why he's even in cryo sleep to begin with it's kind of like that thing of so in poker right right if the stakes are high you know you have a choice it's either you go all in or you save that final piece that might be able to if something does go wrong bring you back right it's that idea uh another thing that they talk about in halo in master chief's like story is one of the quotes from a captain that taught him was in war there's a difference between wasting lives and spending them and you have to know which one is which. Right. And uh, so that's the thing is I get that. I totally get that. Maybe I'm not explaining myself right. But I your isn't your love isn't your main thing why wasn't why wasn't Master Chief on planet doing stuff? Not not just why wasn't he on reach, but why wasn't he just not in cryo sleep period? Cuz if the stakes are this high in general, you think he would be like I said, I would buy it much more. I get why he wasn't on reach. Because the stakes were very high there. And it was very dangerous. And you don't really want to put that pawn at risk. I get that. My issue is, is why, if he's so valuable and so good at what he does, why isn't he off reach doing something else that could benefit the UNSC? Something a little Actually, more safe. Like, that would make more okay, sense wait. to me than him being just on ice, you know? I have an idea, and there, there's no confirmation of this, but I have an idea. Yeah. What if, what if Master Chief was doing stuff on Reach, but you just never ran into him? Now, here's what I mean by that. So, I just searched it up. Do you want to know why they put people into cryo sleep? Okay, why do, that's what I want to know. Why was he on ice in the first place? 
they put people into cryo sleep either to preserve them, as you know, right? But also, when they're going to do faster than light travel, they put people into cryo sleep, or at least like some people. Think about it. What that ship that you see that you see Master Chief in Halo Reach in cryo sleep as the ship is getting ready to just launch. Okay. So and the opening to Halo One is them leaving faster than light travel. Okay. So maybe it's that he was doing stuff on Reach, but he got back to the ship, and they're like, "Listen, we we're extracting now. Right. We got to get you under right now." Okay, but why wasn't anybody else under on that ship? <laughs> maybe there were, and we just didn't see. Because that's know. that's the thing is, if that was the case, if they were, if he was prepped for faster than light travel, then everybody on that ship would have had to be under. Not just Chief. Here, I'll, In fact, Chief I'm would gonna... probably be the last person that would have to be under because he's so armored up. Okay, here's what it is, uh, according to somebody, right? <laughs> according to some... <laughs> Great credits, Listen. dude. According to Fine. somebody. Okay. John okay, No, John... According Johnny to... No. <laughs> according to the uh, Halo Story Reddit... Like, what sounds better, somebody or the Reddit? I, at least there's a credit behind the Reddit, okay. dude. Like, okay. just somebody. According, according to, to somebody. Okay, here, here, here. According to Systolic Helix on the Halo Story subreddit, Chief was in cryosleep at the start of CE because it's standard procedure for non-essential personnel to go into cryosleep on long trips. Uh, saves on power and resources also has the effect of keeping people in their prime longer. Weeks and months in cryo adds up to years, not aging in total. So essentially, as far as the actual, like, faster than light travel goes, the reason why he was in there is because he wasn't directly part of the crew running the ship. Okay, so he wasn't essential to the crew. But yeah, again, he wasn't essential to the crew. Again, dude, I just don't freaking buy it, man. I don't buy it that this super soldier that's your best super soldier is just not doing anything Wait, in this actually, massive yeah. war that's happening according to a deleted account on the same subreddit uh chief actually fought on reach for a while but when oni was certain that reach would fall chief was assigned to leave on the pillar of autumn which is where you can see him right it's standard procedure for non-crew personnel especially spartans to stay in cryo sleep during a slip space jump okay that at least tells me he that was chief doing stuff was doing something okay I can buy that more than he was just in cryo sleep forever until they decided, yeah. hey, let's wake so, him up today of all days. Was, so he was actually on reach doing stuff like I proposed, except he got extracted and said, hey, listen, you're not you're not you're not integral to running the ship. OK, we got to put you under. So that that makes me a little bit happier that he was doing something. But yeah, so that that would immediately eliminate my idea for the show. But. I just think that that would have been a cool, but the show is not canon anyway. So just make that the Halo TV show canon. That the reason he just was in cryo sleep was because he was basically being in prison for his war crimes to save this girl. That would have been cool. Either do that or just straight up tell the story of the Halo games as they're written, right. or like have like a season of just adapted build for up. TV. Yeah, yeah. Have a season to build up Master Chief, then take a seat, then take the second season to go into Noble Team. Yeah, maybe show what season. maybe show what Chief was doing on Reach. Yeah, while Chief was doing while all Reach. the crap was going down, that would have been cool. And then show him getting into cryo sleep. And then you, you know what they could, season two, you know they can have Noble Team. Oh my word! You know what they can do for the, so first season on Reach. You know, Master Chief doing his thing, right? Yeah, he keeps getting reports of a team of Spartans called Noble Team that are going around doing these things. So you follow the story of Noble Team through comms that yeah. master chief is getting you're hearing it in the background and then you see it yeah yeah that'd be cool and then as when he's going uh like then like the sea like the season can end he goes in the uh cryo sleep right? right but you know the actual final shot huh noble six from halo reach standing as he watches the uh the the pillar of autumn go into the sky entering ftl as he stands there, ready for his lone wolf mission, his final one. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. And 
the people that are paying attention to the story and the calm headset, like the calm conversations, they'll realize this is the last member of Noble Team that just delivered Cortana to Chief. That'd be cool. We just fixed the Halo TV show. Yeah, we did. That's the thing is every idea we came up with it's on paper better. is better. Now, all of these ideas could go wrong in execution. Screenwriters could get their dirty little grubby hands on it, do what they do, you know, who knows. But I do say, sir, I think every idea we came up with in unison, my lack of Halo knowledge, but my general feeling, I think, was on point. Right. Your extensive Halo knowledge educating me. This was a good episode. I like it. It was a little bit of education for me. And, dude, I got to be honest. Like, I'm all about the Halo lore outside of the games now. I'm like, I need to know more about this. Because, like, dude, once, everything you were once, saying was, like, music to my ears. That was, like, the type of almost dark sci-fi that I like. Like, the kind of stuff where it's, like... I don't, I've never been a fan of the... I like the original Star Wars trilogy. I think there's a lot of charm to those movies. But I've never been a super big fan of the, like, kind of glossed up, like, typical Star Wars. Like, just that, like... I, I've never been a fan of that type of sci-fi that's all glossed up and everything's super clean and, and neat. And Wait, it's pretty you... pretty standard good versus evil. I like the dark sci-fi type stuff. Like, I don't like... Like, I like the, I like the stuff. Like, oh, you this... Were the... This you liked the you liked episode three of Star Wars when Anakin goes to see the younglings. <laughs> yeah, that was my favorite part. No, like, but that's the type of stuff I like. Is like when I like sci-fi when it's when it's dark like and it's it. and it's and it's allowed to explore interesting ideas like yeah. like this this government slash uh, army type entity just coming in the, the Dude. just coming in the night and kidnapping kids and replacing it with a clone that's gonna die in a couple How? days. That is so that? unique and so cool. Yeah, dude, I gotta ask, how the heck have you not gotten into Warhammer lore yet? Well, like 40k lore. Well, I'm moving in, dude, so you're gonna have no, all the dude. time in the world to... I need to tell you that. <laughs> ...to get me into Warhammer. Warhammer for, dude, Warhammer 40k pretty much coined the term Grimdark. Okay. It Here's the thing, it takes it to another level. That's the weird stuff, dude. Is like war. Everything I've seen of Warhammer, I'm like, this seems like something I'd be into. It's just so intimidating to get into. Oh no, it just, is. There's just so much of it. But everything, like I, I actually jumped recently. I guess this is a good time for what we're playing. I did jump yeah. recently back into the uh, 40k Space Marine game. Ooh, did you get past the glitch? It's yeah, the glitch didn't happen this time. Totally good. fine, running smooth. I'm like, all right, I'm kind of. I'm getting into the rhythm of the combat. I'm like, okay, I'm actually kind of digging this now. So I'm playing that a little bit. Um, but yeah, I I also, the other thing that I liked, I'm not playing this recently, but the, what is it, Dark Tide or whatever? The yes, new, The Dark newest, Tide, like, yeah. it's, yeah, I really actually enjoyed that. It's not even my type of game necessarily, but that just first-person shooter, like, kind of like wave based shooter yeah yeah i really enjoyed that too yeah. and i'm like this seems like a really cool world i just it's just so much so I, i'm looking it's, forward to having some time real time with you to help me like kind of digest warhammer in a in a real way um wait i you know what i oh, here continue saying something i want to pull up a quote from warhammer that i think is going to set the tone for it for you but continue on okay uh, so just continuing with what we're playing, I have uh, because we're going to be traveling a lot in in coming months. Um, we're probably I I started diving in on the Switch Lite a little bit. Uh, I'm playing Super Mario Sunshine right now. Ooh, fun stuff, dude! I'm not gonna lie, I can't believe I slept on this game uh, for so long. I I had a GameCube growing up, like I want to say when I was like. 10 maybe 8 8 9 10 somewhere in there i had a gamecube for a long period of time i mostly played spider-man on it <laughs> um but and uh a sponge the spongebob movie game that's mostly what i played right. on my gamecube but super mario sunshine dude i can't believe i never played it it's so good like 
it's right. it's one of my favorite Mario games so far. I haven't gotten anywhere near beating it. I just started it yesterday. But I've been playing it. I, I probably put about three hours in now, and I'm, I'm loving it. It's really good. Um, it's really simple. It's like you you have this like water pack on your back and you literally just go spray graffiti off of stuff to right. get to get these shines which are like in odyssey it'd be like the equivalent of like the the moons in odyssey or whatever um so yeah i'm really enjoying sunshine a uh, really great 3d mario game been playing a little bit of mario kart Ooh. just jumping back into the switch world man i'm yeah I'm, i've been enjoying mario kart um it's it's so dude i can't mario kart 8 is so good Mm. it's so good i love i just i love how smooth it is i'm also really good at it for no reason like i don't it's one of the very few games in the world that i'm actually genuinely good at and it makes me feel good that i have that game that i'm just genuinely good at so right. I'm like, this is what this feels like. This is what power feels like. And I don't understand ah. it. <laughs> so um, that's really all I've been playing. I kind of fell off of Final Fantasy 16. Um, I'll probably, it's kind of on the same trajectory as uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider was when that came out. So right. back in 2018, Shadow of the Tomb Raider had just come out. And I got married and moved house um ah uh. so final fantasy 16 is kind of on that same trajectory is there's a lot of life changes happening right now we're moving uh your way in a little bit <laughs> so yeah. so yeah uh just a lot of life changes happening so final fantasy 16 i just really don't have time for a 50 plus hour jrpg right now yeah I got um it. so it's definitely gonna be on the back burner for a few months probably but I'm sure I'll come back to it in like a year or two and be like, yeah, this was a great game. I can't believe I – because that's what, that's what happened with Shadow of the Tomb Raider is it I fell off of it because I got married and moved into my house. And then I, can't, I went back to it this year, like towards the beginning of the year, like January. And I finally right. finished it and I'm like, dang, I can't believe I slept on this game for so long. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. yeah. But other than that, yeah, I haven't been... uh, That's pretty much all I've been playing. I've been bouncing around. But I'm probably going to be on Sunshine um, for a few weeks and then however long it ends up taking me. Fair enough. I'm going to keep plugging away at Warhammer as much as I can. Uh, Space Marine. Dude, Space Marine is good. I'm I'm really excited to get to show you the tabletop. As I well, still I still eventually. can't I still can't stand how they talk in Space Marine. I hate it. I absolutely hate what? the dialogue. Okay, well that you know, <laughs> but you don't like the orc dialogue, dude. I cannot stand it. I can't stand you this don't like, like the orc dialogue, like the the Australian, <laughs> but like really like this. Where I know I can't. Always kind of angry, but it's like it's like Australian accent, but it's like this almost high fantasy edge to it it's like i can't stand it dude it's so garbage where it's high gothic and they're talking about the uh munitorums and the administratums and yeah whatnot. i can't it's, dude i it's no so i think it's funny my I mom it. just talk my, so i got no listen so my mom i got my mom a codex for one of the armies that she was interested in actually because it was like 10 bucks your mom plays warhammer no but oh, okay uh, i was like uh, what <laughs> there's there's one army that she said she'd lo- be okay playing okay and I got her the book for that army because it was like ten dollars on sale. Gotcha. And she's like, I talked to her like a couple days earlier. She was like, I I can't read it. <laughs> and I'm like, dang, I guess I'm the only one that knows how to read Warhammer. <laughs> Dude, it's so. So is that how like everything in the tabletop and stuff reads too? Like, not in that that no, dialect like almost. Wasn't... No, so the rules and stuff, they're more straightforward. But okay. the lore and, like, the books, they do read like that because that's part of the setting. That's crazy, dude. I don't know if I could. Dude, I read it. So my I read my first full Warhammer book in fifth grade. Okay. That was my – That here's the thing. The reason why I don't have any issue with it is because I've been into this crap since second grade, and I just got used to speaking like this. Right, yeah. Or, like, understanding it. Also, 
about Warhammer, I have that I have at least one quote that I think is going to kind of get it a bit more close. Okay. To be a man in such times is to be one amongst untold billions. It is to live in the cruelest and most bloody regime imaginable. These are the tales of those times. Forget the power of technology and science, for so much has been forgotten, never to be relearned. Forget the promise of progress and understanding, for in the grim dark future there is only war. There is no peace amongst the stars, only an eternity of carnage and slaughter and the laughter of thirsting gods. I'm not going to lie, that sounds like it could be like a speech in Bioshock. In like a it Bioshock. It could be. Like, you know how like, Wait. you know how like in the beginning of Bioshock, like, yeah. I don't know, like, I know you've played all the way through um, Infinite, but Infinite, I don't know, yeah. I don't know what your experience is with the first Bioshock, but both of them are very similar in that vein where like, they're completely different worlds, but each of them has a leader that, it, you played through all the way through Infinite, so you know that. Yeah, it's basically just infinite universes, all with similar people and stuff. So it's yeah. like each of them has a leader that has different ideals, but they each give this like obtuse speech about the way their societies are run. And that sounds like it could be a speech. Like you could make a Bioshock game that takes place in a universe completely engrossed by war, and that would be the speech, like that the that the leader yeah. gives. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but I, that, I mean, that's, the, that's the kind of stuff I like though. So, I mean Warham that, yeah, I think Warhammer is going to be difficult to get into, but once you're into it, it's really good. Right. Uh, if you, you kind of, I know you listen to some podcasts and I, th I'm pretty sure I remember you mentioning how you like some of the more like, it's more like two people talking about a certain subject, but in a casual, like, fun manner. Yeah, I, I really like – that's what I kind of try to structure our pad, our, our pad yeah. case, our pad case, our podcast like as well because I think that having a naturally flowing conversation between two people that are interested in the same subject and are, yeah. are knowledgeable about the same subject, I think that it just makes the podcast way more digestible right. and more fun and – it makes you feel like you're part of the inside jokes and all that stuff, especially when you listen to every episode. So I, I like podcasts that I like Joe Rogan type podcasts that go on for right. for four or five hours because they're just having a conversation and taping it, you know, you know. So I just sent you a Spotify link to a okay. podcast that does Warhammer lore stuff. OK. And it is a lot more digestible. Uh, actually, you know, the like. It's like a 12-hour car ride from where I am to you, right? Like 12 hours, 13 hours, something 12 like that. hours exactly if we go through the UP. It's 9 if we went through Chicago. We're going through the UP, though, so. Right. Yeah. But uh, last time I visited you guys, uh, to and back, I listened to this the entire time. That's awesome. There, there's some really good stuff. And again, it's very digestible Warhammer lore. Okay. I, I recommend it. Uh, I yeah. I am always looking for stuff to listen to at work. I have my regular podcast, but those only take up like I want to say a few days of my work. So I'll probably be digesting some of this at work. So, yeah. dude, I promise you, next time I next time we do this podcast, because we'll probably be doing the podcast again before we see each other in person. Yeah. Um, but next time I see you for this podcast, I promise you, I'll probably be an expert in warhammer lore because i'm gonna you be better be. because i'm gonna be at least the episodes that i'm caught up on but i'll probably no, just what, how would you suggest it should i start i sh obviously i should probably start from the beginning of the podcast right not quite so okay, okay i'm trying to think the, so the, here's the thing right because i do have a basis of warhammer i it's a lot easier for me to like pick and choose what I want to listen to in the podcast because okay. each episode has like a, a topic, right? Gotcha. It might be on a book. It might be on uh, a certain army, a certain chapter of a space Marines or a certain story or certain character, whatever. Okay. Um, I would, one of the, my favorite seer, like uh, one of my favorite sub series in this podcast, cause they do a uh, book club episode each month or whatever. And there's one I'm going to I'll pick I'll find and like send you the specific episodes, but there's a uh, 
a book club series on the Night Lord's Omnibus. They are a chaos chapter, and they're, like, known for being, like, out of everybody in Warhammer, they're, like, up there with as evil as you can be. So it's a three-book trilogy about them. But okay. it also really humanizes them in a weird way. You have to listen to it, but I promise it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay. I'll yeah. I'll send you some decent ones to start with if you want. Just that way you can kind of get into the Yeah, I'll br- I'll brush up on all the Warhammer lore I can. That way when I come your way I can just totally school you and Oh uh, yeah, so <laughs> I, I expect a five page essay on the horse heresy. Uh failed already. I'm bad at homework, but <laughs> uh Anyway, I mean, what? so what have you been playing, Kai? We haven't even asked what you've been playing. Ah, ain't that the question. So, uh, not last week, but the week before, I started Dishonored. Ooh. Dude, Dishonored is kind of a vibe. Okay, so but... I haven't... I haven't... I played a little bit of Dishonored. I haven't been able to... It never grabbed me, though. I'm waiting for the right, right. time. It definitely will grab me at some point. But what what is your experience it, with Dishonored so far? Dude, so I I really like it. Okay. I really freaking got into it. I did, like... So you know how, like, normally, outside of, like, special events, my streams are usually, like, two and a half to three and a half hours? Right, yeah. My one Dishonored stream went for five. Oh, wow. I could not put the game down you straight you stream for the entire five hours dishonored yeah wow pretty much dang like here's the thing right it's the first time in a game i actually care about doing the stealthy approach okay i never i never take the time to do stealth or like like you know like the incapacitations not killing route like oh yeah it's like but this is the first game where i'm like I want to take this slow, and I want to make sure I do this without killing anyone. I was going to say, you, you got to be careful, man. You kill too many people, you're going to get the rat infestation going. Yeah, like, yeah. There's, <laughs> like there's, like, it's the first time in, in any game that I actually care about that kind of thing. That's but I'm cool. like, nah, this actually makes me, like, want to be stealthy. And that first time I got a zero, like, zero person killed run, okay. I'm like let's freaking go let's freaking go like that here's the thing it's way more satisfying if you can get out of there without killing to be honest right yeah i i'm gonna be honest anytime a game presents me with the option to not not kill i typically do it just because i think it adds an interesting challenge to the game um and a unique one at that because most games are just like yeah mow everybody down and yeah so when a game like tells me not to kill i think that's why i couldn't get into dishonored super like really deep because i had the desire to not kill anybody and i failed immediately and i was like okay well this... <laughs> no, here's the thing though, right choosing the route of not like you know how eventually in dishonored it does give you like hey here's your target for this mission right yeah so i is okay if i spoil like just can i choose yeah, yeah go ahead i don't know when i'm gonna get to okay. it and i'll probably forget by the time i get to it so uh, there is one mission, or like there's a couple, but each mission gives you the opportunity to find a way to non-lethally take somebody out, like take down your target. Okay. One mission, it is you can just pay some guys, like you can do a side quest for some guys, and they're like, listen, if you do this for us, you won't have to worry about these targets at all. And then you find out what they do. Like, here's the thing, right? You think, okay, well, I'm not murdering them, so, you know, I'm morally in the good. But what they do to those two targets, they cut out their tongues and force them to work in the mines for the rest of their lives. Oh. (laughs) Uh, Like, the next mission, uh, you're trying to either assassinate, you can either either assassinate or kidnap a, a royal lady. Okay. And how you can... And when I say kidnap, I mean at this party that you're... It's like a Hitman-style party, so you're trying to, like, schmooze her up and then knock her out or kill her or whatever, right? Right, yeah. At this party, a guy approaches you and says, Hey, I'm in love with this person, so if you can knock them out and get her to me, I'll take her off your hands and not, a, not no harm will come to her. Right. 
but you can but once you realize oh i just kidnapped and just gave this person to somebody that i don't know what their intentions are yeah it's like on a like what's actually worse this or killing them right yeah it may i've never actually questioned that in a game before usually oh i didn't kill them it'll be fine no i'm a monster i feel like a monster for not killing well them. i mean he said no harm will come to her so in the in the standard moral sense of what harm means you would imagine that would mean emotion any emotional or physical harm which I would so. both be tied into the thing that we've both know you're thinking might be happening yes like but also, it, it, it never, the problem is you still don't know for sure but yeah you still don't know for sure if that guy's morality is whole, on the yeah. level of your morality yeah and then there's also that whole thing of again cut out the two people's tongues and force them to work in the mines for the rest of their life like yeah that's a fate worse than death to a lot of people right right yeah like it's and i think because so the getting the tongue cut out mission happened before that one yeah i think once i realized how horrible that one was my mind goes to oh crap what did i just do to this poor woman right yeah like he could be an awesome guy and maybe that's good that'd be awesome that's awesome <laughs> or maybe he's not and he just said i'll take her off your hands right yeah you know it, it it makes you question what you're doing a bit more. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, but other than Dishonored, which again, great game, and I'm excited to keep playing it now. Yeah. Uh, Minecraft because of the community Minecraft server. Okay, yep. And also, the I've been playing the Bloodborne D-Make. Bloodborne D-Make? Oh, like... So, like the they, they took like the... Yeah, PS1 uh, style okay. Bloodborne. Yeah. They take like the first like two main bosses and then they have a custom like unique boss. Okay. And put that all in the PlayStation 1 style. Dude, it's pretty good to be honest. I love how you're playing the Bloodborne D-Make and you still have it. Play you could just no, be playing the real Bloodborne. It's because yeah. I forgot cuz I I keep meaning to ask like, "Hey, can I set this to the main PlayStation 4 again?" Yes, I you can. Yeah. Let me it should be charged, actually. I could do it right now. Do you it right now. After. Yeah. Oh, fine. Okay, just do just... it right now. So I, I know that you're doing it. Yeah, just set it to my primary PS4 because... Um, you might have to blur out my TV screen, mayhaps, because hopefully, I don't want to show any... Hopefully I didn't change my password. Hopefully not. If, if I did, I'll just tell you what it is, and then you can... Uh, I'll just cut this part out. Yeah. But yeah, just do it right now, because I, I want to make sure that you actually get it done. Because you need to play Bloodborne. It's checking the system storage status. Oh my goodness. It, it'll, it's going to be a minute. So let's just keep going with this for a bit. And then afterwards. Okay. Then we'll, we'll just save the password and stuff for afterwards. Yeah, okay. But you know. So Minecraft, Bloodborne D-Make, Dishonored. That's really what I've been playing, to be honest. Like okay. I don't think there's anything else that has, really comes to mind right away. I just love yeah. that. I'm playing the Bloodborne D-Make. I'm not playing the actual Bloodborne that I've been waiting to play and dying to play. <laughs> also, I'm going to have to do the... I'm going to have to do a repeat of last week. Oh, my Or last gosh. podcast. I, I'll be right back. I That's fine. I'll just get clipped again for a short. That's fine. Gosh, dang it. No, not again. <laughs> Little does he know, I've had to poop this entire time. I've just been letting farts out every so often. Because I hold my poop. Like a man. It's alright, though. Some 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 people just can't hold it, you know? Let's see. I wonder what we can see in the background. What can we see in the background of his... Scott. Ah, speaking of the Master Chef, there's a Master Chef poster. My body is throwing a hissy fit, and it's being cringe. Yeah? Was it rough? Was it a rough one? Uh, it was something. I don't know, man. <laughs> solid, oh, or, solid or liquid? Solid. Nice. This is not At becoming least... a clip. You're not allowed to... <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> at, least, <laughs> at least it was a salad. Uh, <laughs> it was something, man. I, I don't know. Here. Oh, dang. There's the Resident Evil 4. Oh, original Resident Evil 4. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, is that still downloaded on there? That's funny. Uh, yeah. Here, let me... What is it? Save I also I, I also own Remake, too. Update now. Oh, you gotta update the system? <laughs> All right. Well, while it's doing that, we'll we'll wrap up the show. Sounds good. But uh, I'll make sure you. Uh, is it still, is it updating? Make sure you uh, get it going. Systems to up, update. Oh, it going. I can I can it tell going. you use your PS4 frequently, Kai. Listen. <laughs> to be fair, after like again, I haven't used it since. The again because you mentioned like hey I, I have to set the PS4 to one that you had. Right. I'm like. Well, I'm not about to go and spend money on a PlayStation 4 game right now. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, well, I guess that's it. That, I guess I, I, I guess have, I'm never using this thing again. <laughs> I guess I'm not using this thing again until until <laughs> I don't know. So you know, it's just been it's been there vibing. That's fun. Look at it. It like it went vibing. really fast at first, and then it's like, nah, fam. I'm gonna just chill you know, here. going like one like. Point one megabyte, point two <laughs> megabytes a second right now. We have the good speed here at my house. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in for a, another brand new episode of I Game Cause. Uh, this just turned into a conversation about me and Kai's personal life, so we're just gonna this, this wrap just up. Become, this <laughs> just the Joe Rogan experience. We're, we're just gonna really. we're just gonna wrap up the show here. Uh, it was a great short episode. We. Wrote a better Halo TV show. Uh, we've both been playing great games, and we appreciate you guys for uh, watching and supporting. As always, I hope you enjoyed this one. It was very brisk. Uh, I, as always, am Tim, a.k.a. TC Russell, a.k.a. Dat Boy Sly, and I am joined by Kai, a.k.a. Risen Chaos, a.k.a. The Warhammer Goat. Uh, Is that just going to be... That's the same name now. Yeah. The Warhammer. The, War, the Warhammer Goat. And... Uh, Kai, is there any closing comments you have for the show? I'd like to have a word with the writers of the Halo TV show. Um, I Listen, I swear it's going to be very, very calm and polite. I just want to have... I just want to talk to him. I just <laughs> want to talk to him. I... <laughs> and, then, and then as we discussed, if they don't want to talk, uh, Arson or Grand Theft Auto. You know. Arson, Grand Theft Auto, or Deicide. We're going to go fight the Greek Pantheon. We're, we're going to figure it out. We'll figure it out. But as always, thank you for joining us. Uh, yeah, and have a good day. Out, bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>